We think that the industry can be so much better. For me, success is when I own all my time. We believe in stop competing and start dominating our market and to get the, the homeowners what they deserve the best. Don't let anybody tell you what success is and don't let anybody dictate what your success is because your family life may be a lot more important than money. Like what are you being a disciple to? Your dreams, your visions, your family, your goals, whatever that may be. I want to switch this around where I hold the cards and I put myself in the position of authority and expertise. Uh, good morning everybody, welcome to the Roofing Machine Unity meeting. It's Friday morning, we're here in Utah. I'm super excited, we got some great guests. Deshaun, uh, Brian, and uh, Adam Benson, the, the roof strategist. Uh, I'm really excited to have you and Mark go there. So what we're gonna do, we do this every month. It's free for everybody. You gotta get the, the Zoom link uh, from our, our office, from Ashley. And we have uh, for everybody, but we also have it for members only bi-weekly. So we do this constantly, we have special guests and we brainstorm some ideas about the industry, how it can become better. Okay, so why do we do this? Um, the industry is growing, it's changing every day, but we're really passionate with Monarch Roofing. We started Monarch Roofing. We want to share all the, what we know because we think that the industry can be so much better. We believe in stop competing and start dominating our market and to get the, the homeowners what they deserve the best. So without further ado, I want to ask a few questions and you guys, if anybody has any questions, please comment. Uh, and I'm going to ask a question to the panel here. So I'm going to be the moderator, moderator so I'm going to be asking the questions today. So before we start, guys, i um, really excited to have you on. Mark, you look like you have a little special uh, award here uh, today. You want to share it with everybody? <laughs> you want to start this off right off the bat, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start with it. <laughs> no, um, Deshaun, you've impacted us, man, since we met you, really, the last six months, and it's been killer, and, and we, we've appreciate all you do for us you come on but this is a special bow tie for oh, you our, our team's been wearing them man ever since that that's so we, we hope that you throw that on there but i, um, I appreciate I you i brought a collar shirt this weekend so that's perfect uh, i thought you have it on today but <laughs> nah, i got that fresh shirt nah. here so. yeah i only rock the collar shirts at roofing conferences at these other conferences i get to dress down you know what I mean? <laughs> but there's love right here you see that that's yeah. awesome and just for people who don't know the bow tie represent excellence in the business world so you know i love it it's awesome, man. I like, I like the green and the, the Riva uh, Golden Stars. It looks yeah, good, yeah. man. They look good. So uh, we talk about uh, New Year resolutions. We come into a new year and everybody uh, is trying to uh, find what they should focus on. But what is uh, something that, or, or what would define, if you think about it, if you go back a couple steps, what does success mean like, to you personally and how do you set your goals for the year? Yeah, that's a good question. Do you want to start off? Oh, yeah, I, I set it up. Um, so, I don't really set New Year's resolutions. Um, I believe, you know, a lot of people say New Year, New Me. I say same me, uh, new mentality, new goals, same grind, same hustle, you know. But um, I do, I'm big on writing out my goals every year. So I do I do a vision board every year. Um, so I map out my year. Like I do a whole bunch of visions. I do a big vision board. It's probably like the size of this table. You know, I do a big vision board. And then I do um, personal goals and then I do uh, roof hustler goals. So I got like all the goals I want to accomplish for roof hustlers and then I do my own personal goals. So my personal goals would be something like my goal this year is to take my daughter on 12 daddy-daughter dates. You know what I mean? Like that goal is um, to spend more individual time with both my kids. Like take me and my son like just me and him days and then me and my daughter days and um, of course getting my books in, doing things like that. And then what success me to me personally? Um, success for me, success is when I own all my time. That's, that's what real success to me is. When I get to wake up and do what I want, when I want, with who I want, and choose who I want to be around and where I want to be, and not let the money move me, but let the um, the decisions and like, oh, I want to be that place. That's, that's what real success is to me, man. Once I buy back, like at least 90% of my time. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? Hello, man. Um, yeah, and so we talked about this last year. I mean, success to me is I check in with five things on a daily basis. You know, family, fatherhood, health, of course, friendships, and then career. Okay, so I, I like to have a balance. So I always feel like if my family time is a little bit less, I'm not fully successful. I'm not fully happy. And I think success, and we get into this mindset of looking at a ton of people, and we look at uh, personal development. And I think success is different for everybody. I think if we go to the, all these squares right here and ask. Uh, everybody wants success. It's different. So I don't think we need to your success 
your definition of success is going to be different than mine, and that's okay, right? I don't think I think our audience needs to understand that, guys. You got to figure out what success is to you guys, okay? Don't let anybody tell you what success is, and don't let anybody dictate what your success is because your family life may be a lot more important, important than money, right? In your career, so you may need to spend more time with your family, right? I like a checks and balances. So every day, check with those five things. At the end of the day, I say, man, what's in that debit section? Matthew McConaughey says it. It's a killer video. Got to got to look at it. It's on YouTube. I listen to it constantly every single year probably 10 15 times um, and I just want to make sure that all five of those things are balanced fatherhood of course is top of the line for me my dad or my son is, is number one for me and um, everything else kind of falls into place on that that's what success is to me a fully balanced life I like that you know <clears throat> every, as you mentioned Mark everyone measures success differently and I think my my pitfall originally was looking at success as certain levels of achievement, whether it was financial achievement, whether it was growth within the company, whether it was bringing in the, the, a big deal. And all of this really created a lack of feeling successful because I was chasing things. So I was measuring myself in uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy's book, The Gap in the Game. That's been one of the most impactful books I've read is in between where I am and what I viewed success to be. And then I listened to a podcast, Dean Jackson, he's a marketer, if no one's ever heard of him. He's one of the most brilliant minds in the marketing space. And he really shaped my viewpoints of what success is. And he goes, it's not, it's not chasing something, it's being something. So I actually sit down, I journal every day. So that's part of my, even this morning, unfortunately it was at 3 a.m., but <laughs> as we were talking about over coffee, but. I've defined what, what it is to measure myself, when am I being successful? And those metrics to me are focused, again, just a few highlights on the professional side on, uh, as you and I talked about Mark, focusing first on impact. I don't take projects any longer on financial. I, I did it first to get needs met, but that's not to me the true definition of success. What Deshaun said about time, owning your time, uh, being successful when I'm taking care of my health and my mental health, because this, this business, especially chasing growth can really, I burned out of the roofing industry. Same with me, yeah, and, same with me. And I told you we talked about it yeah, this morning as well. I chased, I chased financial gain and I got so off balance that I, I burned out. I mean, I was in a hospital, literally, like thinking I was having a heart attack at 20, whatever, 28 or something like 20, I don't remember, I was under 30 years old. So anyway, I, I look at now measuring it, what do I do, what, how, when am I being successful day to day? And of course, in terms of goal setting, um, I, I really like to practice what Brian Tracy talks about by rewriting your goals every day without looking at them from the day before. Yeah. Because so many people just write them once, but they don't have a meeting. You, and then, you do that like uh, once every morning, you do it at night in the morning. I've been following you, you've been journaling. Yeah. yeah I've got a couple questions about that. Yeah. Uh, you're journaling, we, it's pretty cool. I, we, we can definitely get into it, but I do it, I do it frequently. I'll, I'll do it um, sometimes daily and then the, the goal side to monthly to quarterly, but I really trim it down and now I have three very clear goals for, the, for, our, for our company for this year. But I always ask myself two layers deep. And Deshaun and I talked about this. We co-hosted a training inside the Pitch Pro Movement on goal setting. And the one thing that, that I think everyone needs to remember is ask yourself why. Because I, I vividly remember at RoofCon, I asked this, this rep, so what's your income goal? And he said, 400,000. He didn't even skip a beat. And then I said, why? And then he was like, blank. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why not 350? Why not 500? Why not 200? Why not 250? That's a lot of money. He didn't have an answer. That's not going to carry you through when life gets tough because this industry is not a pleasant one all the time. So asking yourself, why is it important? And then why is that important? And going two layers deep. So yeah, we talked about it today, you know, success is not just the money part. You got to be happy. And that's my goal for salespeople. Yeah. Really, that's why I love the training aspect of it is I would like to rather train salespeople on how to be happy in this industry rather than how much money. John Jay from Monarch Roofing, he sold over $5 million this year. Okay, and something hit me when I was talking to his manager and he said, you know, we were doing goal setting in our morning meeting. He said, you know, my goal is four million. Four, he said four, a little over four million. I'm thinking, like, wow, he just sold over five million, but now his goal is four million. Wonder what his mindset is. You know, what his mindset is he knows that he had other things lacking in his life when he sold five million. Now he wants to start focusing on maybe six, what success is to him. So, John Jake, man, shout out to you, buddy. Um, it's not being soft at all. It's uh, figuring out what success is to you, and I, uh, I love it. Man. That's awesome, that's awesome. And that's a little bit how we started Mark. You know, in 2017, you were the company, you know, so you worked so hard for six months, 12 months, get to 18 months going in, day in and that day out, six days, seven days a week. I know how door door can get to. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we came up with the roofing machine to start implementing the system. It's never about the people. People never leave, they're just, the system creates a, a successful career. So if you can focus as 
owners or leaders to uh, focus on systems so you can make it those hours possible. Yeah. Um, it's not about what you want, it's always about what they want. Deshaun, you talk about this all the time, so. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, okay, good, good, good. So, You've been teaching for a while, both of you, three of you, uh, you know, and one of the biggest things that, that I get, okay, so as a owner of a business, I'm like, okay, if you come in to Sean Mark to our company and you spend two days with us, how do you re implement uh, what you taught our team for the longevity? And taking back to what we're going through right now, these two days, we get two days of fire, there's gonna be some great speakers, overwhelmed with information, we're gonna get really excited, and we get the Monday one fire. How do we keep it going through the month, next month? That's a great Talked um, about this last yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. Because I attend a lot of conferences, even outside of the roofing industry, and I highly encourage anybody that's on the call, um, go to conferences outside of the roofing industry. Like that, don't let only your education come from the roofing community. You know what I mean? Like Eric Thomas speaking at a conference this weekend, I went to his conference. Um, Coach Michael Burt, I don't went to his conferences. But um, first and foremost, anytime you go to a conference, you got to be intentional. You know what I mean? Most people just come here and they frolic through a conference. They frolic through a podcast. They frolic through like, this is what's going on right now. So one thing I do before every conference, I sit down and I write three things that I'm looking to get out of every conference. Like, what am I looking to walk away with? I'm looking to walk away with this, 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 and this. Like last time I was at Dota Dokkan, I was like, I'm looking to walk away with improve my leadership skills, uh, get more in tune with my finances, and X, Y, I, well, I can't remember the third one. But at that conference, I met my uh, CPA. You know what I mean? Because I was intentional about it. And then I met my CPA and he helped me out this year. So first and foremost, get intentional with what you want to learn out of that conference. And then you're going you're gonna to be bombarded with a ton of information. And you're probably going to forget like 90% of that in like the next day mm -hmm. or two days after that. So what I always encourage is find one or two things that you can go home and implement immediately. Mm -hmm. Like not, not, oh, I'm going to do this and do that. No, no, no. What's the one, two things that really stood out to you that you can implement immediately? So I went to uh, Coach Michael Burke conference and we did the, uh, it's called the Million Dollar Coaching Summit. And um, he gave us like two days of phenomenal information. We, tra we trained for like eight hours a day. And um, the biggest thing that I took away from it was, um, we did this thing called a uh, what is called uh, it's pretty much like a, a mini commercial like he, uh, he he got a name for it but it's like when you do a commercial when you hit your key points that you want to sell and that was the biggest takeaway from I did I got from that so I went home called my cameraman I'm like hey we need to do this 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 and this I wrote it out met with them that next week we did a commercial we made 40 grand that next week you know what I mean? Just from implementing that one thing. Not going out there and trying to do a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but just the one thing. So find one or two things that you can implement and then slowly go back and implement more. And then what I do is after the conference, I go home, I relook over all my notes and I get a highlighter and I highlight all the stuff that stand out to me as I'm rereading my notes. Like, ooh, that stand out to me. And I highly encourage, don't bring a laptop to a conference and type out notes. It's the worst way to take notes. Cause you can write down everything that you hear and your brain don't work like that but when you write it out that's the stuff that really stand out to you so that's the best way at least at least i feel to really um, get the most out of a conference yeah that's killer yeah same thing one or two three nuggets that you can implement um same thing with these meetings my big goal is that you know i hope everybody gets something that they can implement today yeah. like i sent you guys a text i said guys of course we always want to give value but let's try to give something that they can implement today yeah you know and it's so important because i don't want to waste anybody else's time i want to say you know, give them something that I know or that worked for me that mm -hmm. they can implement today. So yeah. um, it takes review. And, and we talked about discipline and motivation. I used to be the biggest guy for motivation, right? 15 years ago when I first got into the personal development, it was a multi-level marketing company that I was in and personal development hit my life. Who did? Who did? Eric, I did Vima. So okay, I, did Vima, I used yeah, to do uh, Amway. Yeah. Amway. So, so it was killing. <laughs> and, 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 you know, unfortunately the, the company is still continuing, but I didn't continue with it. Um, but it was the biggest learning experience for me because it was personal development. But what I did find was motivation does not mean discipline. Mm -hmm. I think if we can figure out two or three things that you can get disciplined for, don't do something. Martin ran 1,500 miles last year. There's no way I'm disciplined enough. I know myself that I can run 1,500 miles in one year. But I do know that I could probably run five miles a week. And if I do that times 52, it's a lot more miles than I ran last week. So that's mm -hmm. my goal, right? So don't be, be real with yourself because I don't think... Uh, you're gonna continue something that in your mind you know that you're not gonna be able to do. Stay disciplined with something that you can do and motivation's gonna be gone, right? I was in Hill and Head, we did a sales meeting and we say motivation means nothing because it's gonna phase off, mm -hmm. right? Figure out how you can stay disciplined on what's important to you. Maybe 1,500 miles is not important to you, all right? So find what's important to you, stay disciplined on it and get better. Hey, before I pass to you, Adam, uh, just for everybody don't know, I study words. 
But um, the word discipline is derived from the word disciple. And the word disciples means to give yourself to a person or a cause. So when you get to discipline, it's not just like staying focused on something, it's giving yourself to something. Like what are you being a disciple to? Your dreams, your visions, your family, your goals, whatever that may be. So be aware of that. Like being disciplined means you're a disciple to something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, Adam, absolutely. You, you hit a lot of what I wanted to say about handwriting. Key thing, don't bring a laptop or an iPad to a conference for any reason whatsoever. It is garbage you're putting in. You're regurgitating. You need to process the information. So I just want to reiterate that. But I want, I agree with everything Deshaun said, man. If you, if I would have spoken first, it would have looked word for word. Just hit all that. So I want to go from a different angle. I read his mind. Yeah. The one thing, well, we're wired similarly and then also very differently at times, um, which is great. So, so much of conferences, I want to hit two kind of key points. Point number one is be mindful of the space that you're in. Sometimes the biggest breakthroughs that you have have nothing to do with what the speaker is saying. It has nothing to do with what you learned. It's the fact that you've dedicated time to be in a learning environment. Uh, we all have access to oodles of information. I mean, we live in information like drowning mode. Especially you, you give all, all your stuff for free on YouTube, man. <laughs> Not, I don't give everything <laughs> away for free, but I give away a boatload for free on the YouTube channel. My, my point in that is that we need to, to get to sitting here, we've dedicated this time. This conference, I wasn't, I didn't do the VIP stuff yesterday. I drove in, I get in yesterday. I'm telling you, if I left it right after this, the conference was already worth it. A good thing I didn't spill my coffee in your laptop. Thank you. Appreciate I'm gonna move this over. <laughs> <laughs> spill it on day uh, <laughs> um, The reason I say that is I don't get time away from the busy day to day, as does everyone who's here. Does anyone have time on their day to day to spend eight hours fully invested in personal development and growth on a regular basis? Heck no. But when we're at these shows or we're, we're in a learning environment, we bring a coach in or a mentor in or something, we're fully locked in. And there's just something that happens that we create space in our mind for epiphanies to come up. So I look for those gems inside the teaching. The teachings are great, by the way. Always looking, locking those in, but drawing these little connections. So I look at kind of in that empty space. Um, and the reason I say the empty space, I learned that from Cam Knight. It's a book I read on speed reading. He talks about how we learn, which you had said, you know, review your notes. That's yep. one of them. Having the intention is another set on speed reading. Previewing who's going to be there, which you, did, you and I did over yep. you know, yesterday, figuring who we're going to see, when. So giving that space. And the second thing is to, to have clarity on why you're executing what you're executing. Because so many people, especially salespeople, um, if you have the attention span of a gnat or a squirrel, Agree. drop a comment in the chat right? because we're in sales like boom 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 oh yeah if I can close more if I can knock more doors oh yeah and then I'm gonna start doing this and nothing ever gets done and so much of what our biggest breakthroughs like my my own personal biggest breakthroughs and the ones that uh, some specific people I've coached have been really honing in on the one thing and, and if we look at sales as a continuum if we look at it in, in a series of stages there's usually a block or as Brian Tracy calls it a bottleneck and that bottleneck is the one thing that if we just optimize, all of a sudden we're gonna start making more sales. So, so many people try to, try to do too much. My, my diagnostic ex process is, is built upon the roofing sales success formula that I teach, the be, the do, the say, getting the right person, doing the right thing, saying the right thing. And when we look at this, we can say, hey, where's my block? Is it in the be, the do, or the say? And then we just open that floodgate and then boom, it flows. And then we're gonna get to the next block and we work, work on that. So just to wrap this up with actionables, one, figure out exactly what you need to break through because you're gonna leave with a lot of good ideas that you can execute that aren't gonna make a lick of difference, but you're gonna feel good and give yourself a pat on the back. Unfortunately, those don't write paychecks and they don't free up your time, okay, which is success, as Deshaun said. So figure out what you really need to focus on and then give yourself room in that space to have those epiphanies and link up what can really help you grow. Because it might have nothing to do with the show, it might be in your personal life. Which mine, by the way, so far, was I'm taking, she doesn't know this yet, my <coughs> wife, I'm taking her on a vacation every six weeks. I just said it publicly, now I have to do it. Because I haven't taken <laughs> hey, a vacation in two now. years. Because wow. I got off balance. Yep. It was worth it to get to where we are. But anyway. Amen. Well, that was, that was it. Seasons of focus, seasons of balance, man. You speak just, the one thing, that's Martin's language, buddy. One yeah. thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, we were on the plane today, and I looked over, or the yesterday, I looked over at Martin. I said, "Man, when's the last time he had like an hour?" Or actually, we were on the plane for three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I was like, "When's the last time he had three and a half hours to just to do what he needed to do?" And he, awesome. Yeah, his hand was moving like a mile a minute. But yeah. I was like, "Man, that's awesome."
That's awesome. And then we got some great comments here. Uh, one said the Sonics, we measure success by recognizing all of our small victories. You know, we yeah. talk about setting love goals. That. Let's get gradual, take away Sonics. Wow. Yeah, Sonics powerful, man. I, I love this quote. So, uh, question uh, with DDD conference right now, right? So, what, tell us a little bit of tips or something that new door to door salesmen should avoid doing. At the conference? No, no, no. Oh, and, and on the field, like in general? Yes. Yeah. Oh, one thing, wow. <laughs> Talk about one thing. What's something like you, like you brand new, like, hey, please don't do that, man. This is a mistake. You, you should not be doing this. And in sales or door to door. I, I know this sounds silly, but um, <clears throat> I think the one thing for new salesmen, right? New salesmen, the one thing that they should avoid doing is thinking too much. Like a lot of salesmen, they, like I know people that mentally go through a whole scenario before they knock on the door. Mm -hmm. And then they knock on the door and that scenario don't even take place. And I'm like, bro, just be where your feet at, get out of your head. And most new salesmen aren't mentally strong, let alone mentally healthy, right? So I say, get out of your head, just be where your feet at. So when we out there knocking doors, like we just in that moment. Like, I'm not worried about the next door or the door after that, mm -hmm. none of that, just be where you at. So get out of your head and just be in the moment. Stop trying to like, be a psychic and predict the future. So if you're a new guy, just be just be there. Just be in the moment and enjoy the process of everything that's taking place. Stop trying to be like, oh, if I come out of there, I get five, or I make this type of money, I do this, this. No, just be there. Just get out there, knock it up, and just be where your feet at. So I think that's, and, and follow the rules. Like, you're not better than the system or the process. Follow the rules. <laughs> that's, that's why I love that. Oh, man. So there's, there's two things that I think are the most important. Um, Number one is to always have a plan when you go out. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see reps make is in their head there's this internal dialogue of, I'm a sleazeball, I'm door-to-door -door salesperson, the homeowner's painting me into this box. They've, and then this, this poisons their mind. So they lack confidence showing up. And a large part of this is because in door-to-door -door sales, we're in direct sales, so this is a cold door knock. My mission is to help everybody go from cold to warm as fast as possible. How do we do that? By working the friendship formula, by being in that neighborhood over and over again. So the biggest mistake is letting your, the things you're hearing poison how you think about yourself. And the second biggest mistake is the, what I call the one and done. I did it. I mean, have you guys done oh, that? Knock, you knock a neighborhood one time. Yeah, knock a neighborhood one time. Oh, that neighborhood. Yeah, back at this one. So what's happening here is you go through and everyone says, who the heck are you? So now you're cold. You're literally in the, in the most challenging battle from a sales environment. No one knows who you are. When we work in the same neighborhood, and again, when we work a system, I have my touch points of when I'm going to knock and what I'm going to say for all the key touches. When I'm new in a neighborhood, when I sign a new customer, with a job schedule on the day of install, when the install is done. You should have an opener for each of those scenarios. Yep. You now, especially, you should really only have a cold door knock one time. Yep. The next visit, there's literature. There's mailers if you use them. I teach using mailers, yep. direct mail. You are revisiting with a friendly visit about the material, about this, to have the purpose, to have everyone, everyone in sales has a different reason. They call them justifiers, a purpose, a reason, a why. The point is, is you're there with intention and they've likely seen you. And all of that time, even if you're not getting traction, they're seeing the truck, they're seeing you talk to neighbors, they're seeing you in and out, they're seeing you try to work it. And then they start seeing yard signs. So the biggest mistake is thinking that the, yeah, let's boil it down to this one, that the grass is greener in the next place because mm -hmm. it sure as heck ain't. Nope. And do not drive around waiting, I did this, waiting for that perfect, oh man, they're outside, they're ready to go. <laughs> Wait for the easy one. Yeah. You know, sometimes it'll work, but anyway, that's mine. No, I love it. And I wish I could talk more on door-to-door, -door, so I'll be very transparent. Door-to-door -to -door is, is not my thing. You understand? And it's not, never been, I've been, uh, we call it Silver Spoon with Monarch Roofing because Martin has been the best branding and the best marketing. So mm -hmm. I think all of Monarch Roofing can uh, understand that we have been blessed with leads. Yeah. Now, what I can say that I, with confidence is that we are very good and I was very good at the wow effect with homeowners. So what I would do is I would wow effect a homeowner in order for them to tell all of their neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. I would spend as much time as I, <coughs> excuse me, as much time as I possibly can with that homeowner. And you know, we, we recently with um, a, a neighborhood last year when I was training with Mike Brandon, our goal was just neighborhood takeover, yeah. right? But we didn't door knock one door, right? It was just absolutely caring about the homeowner, right? 
I detached myself from the sale because I wasn't yeah. the one making the commission. I was training a salesperson, right? So I detached myself from that. We talked about that today. So I didn't, you know, of course I cared about the outcome because yeah. I wanted Mike Wren to get that contract, but I wanted all in all to make sure that Mike knew how to take over that neighborhood by wowing the homeowner, all the small details. And Martin could, well, he did write a book about it, right? He, he could write a book about the small game th th things like, you know, this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and sending you things and, and just taking care of people to them know that you truly care, right? Yeah. So that is my biggest thing. Guys, wow your homeowners, spend as much time as you possibly can. The only appointment that matters that you're on is the one that you're with, you said it. Yep. Where yeah. your feet are at, right? Concentrate on that home and then make that home so important that that neighbor wants to go off and tell the whole neighborhood. I wish, uh, I wish Monarch could chime in on this because they, we, we are the best at taking over neighborhoods without yeah. door knocking, right? And, and, and it's possible, it's possible. So all the door-to-door -door people out there, I think the CEOs need to be listening. While you have door-to-door -door reps, start branding like crazy, right? Yeah. Dimitri talks about it, branding, market, and it doesn't take much money if you do the small things. Social media is for free. There's a ton of social media out there, right? Riva, we brand all the time, but it's all free, yeah. right? So take uh, advantage of that CEOs, and then that will help your salespeople while they door knock. They're gonna start turning into getting some leads, and now it's on them to be trained to take those leads and turning them into as many as possible. So. Can I can I push back on Please. that just slightly? Yep. Yep. So I I hear this a lot, and I by the way I fully agree. I took great care of my customers. I just interviewed a gentleman named Mitch on my channel, and he, he did 140 grand of income from just referrals alone, plus another this is second year roofing, plus another 140 from his self at least. And he shared about wowing that customer. But what I think people do, and I, we ju I just ran a training at the Pitch Park Movement last Wednesday on referrals, and that some people don't ask. Some people rely, and, and if you're there, this is the one thing that the reason I wanted to push back is so many people that get into roofing are good with people, mm -hmm. and they channel this in a way that says, well, I'm just, I'm a people pleaser, I'm gonna make them really happy, and then the referrals will come, and that's not enough. Nope. And yeah, if you look at this, for every owner that's on the call, the more we can are willing to pay to acquire a customer, the more competitive we can get. You go run pay-per-click ads in Dallas, get your wallet out. You better have a, a five-figure budget. And what happens is most people look at buying the one house. I look at buying the neighborhood. If you already signed that customer, you would be wasting the, a free and valuable opportunity to knock the neighbor's door. Hey, Peggy just chose us to do her roof because age, hail, whatever the reason is, got it overturned from the insurance. If you even average a half a deal per deal, you just add a 50% of sales. Now you're willing to say, hey, my, eight, my, my customer acquisition cost, instead of this, is now spread. I'm willing to spend even more money. I can up my budget by 50% to get into those neighborhoods. And the only exception, I was just training uh, a company out in the state of Washington, a retail company, and 60% of their leads are referrals. 60%, they're the top producing company in the state. And they, um, I went through this with them, and they said, Adam, we can't do that. And I was I was about to like lose my mind. And I'm like, why is that? They're like, we have too many leads. And I was like, okay, excuse granted. So when you get to that point of getting too many leads, stop. Like that's cool. Like if you can't keep up, do it. But if you're not there yet, you cannot stop at just doing good service. You need to work a system. You need to be you need to lean into the discomfort of knocking in the neighbors. You need to lean into the discomfort of asking for referrals. Give and then ask. But so many people, I just, I want to caution everyone that it's not enough to stop at doing that and thinking that you're good at sales. Because this is customer service. And there is a very strong interconnection between the two. But I just want everyone tuning in to know that there's, it's a yes and. Yes, give great service and lean into it and do it. It's not a this or that, mm -hmm. it is an and. Correct, yeah. I don't know, Sheridan. And yeah. just, this is off topic, but. All my people out there who knock doors, don't you wish you was like spoon fancy? <laughs> I know, right? Like, don't you wish you, you had a silver spoon, bro? Like, you heard that? It was like, my people silver spoon fan. I'm like, what? I wish, man. You got soft knuckles. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, 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 that's how you get to this level. And like you're saying, yeah. like, it's be intentional with homeowner. You know, I always yeah. use it to ask the owner, hey, do you know anybody, your neighbor across the street looks like he's got damage? Do you know yeah. who? But is it the intention? Like, you are very intentional, the showing very intentional, Mark. How the, I don't know if there's a trick to teach your salesman because yeah. I can hear the same salesman say the same language all the way through with different results. Right? Can we play a game? Everyone on the chat, are you willing to participate? If not, I'm walking off stage. Yes. <laughs> all right. In the chat, I want everybody to, to make a comment with the number of referrals you asked for this week. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna talk amongst ourselves while we wait for this. So the zero, number of referrals zero. And I want you to be honest, please. Two. Zero. Um, the reason that I do this as these come through is when I'm at companies Three. or on stage, I bring this up. So far, the largest number I've seen is the number three. Yep. This zero. is, in, everyone that said zero, I, I really wanna say thank you for being real, okay? Six. Six, nice job, is that Cody? I don't have my glasses on. Oh, so you work for Monarch, you don't yeah. care. Yeah, <laughs> so, five. So the, the reason is that I ask this, we know this is the easiest way. So I'm piggybacking Ten. on that. I see you, Jake. Nice work, Jake. Yeah. yeah, the highest um, closing rates for any company hands out without is referrals. Their handout. So deals. why do we invest into pay per click when you can mm -hmm. invest into referrals? Correct. And to have that system, and I know the reasons. I wish we. Twenty three. We, we, I got the countdown. Nice work. Uh, whoever said twenty three. Yeah, Babbitt's crushing this neighborhood. It's a monarch guy. He's crushing yeah. this neighborhood right now. He's nice. Sure. So the, the clearly a system in place for this. Clearly, yeah. the the big thing holding people back, and I got to shut up because we got the timer countdown going, <laughs> is to not be. People are afraid to ask. I'm, I'm, I'm sleazy. I feel I don't feel right. It feels desperate. This is all in how it's presented, and there's such an easy way to do that. But my point is, we know that these are the easiest things to ask when people don't do them. And why wouldn't you? We are in direct sales. You know what direct sales means? It means you have to directly go out and get it. Okay? It me means you, you write your own paycheck. Easy to do, but yeah. also easy not to do, right? Adam? It's so easy not to so do. We're so confused a lot of times. You have a job description. You have, mm -hmm. a, you know, your company's about this. What is your mission? Yeah. If you're a homeowner, if you're a salesman, it's my mission is to help every single homeowner get what they deserve the best. Mm -hmm. And if, they don't, if I don't sell to them, it's a disservice for the community, yeah. you're going to ask for a referral. If you mm -hmm. say, I want to make money, you made me your money this week. I'm just, I'm yeah. done. I made my money. I got my leads. I got my five leads this week. I'm good. Yeah, you I can take off. You preach that all the time, man. All yeah. about. Are you hiring? Because I'm going to come. If you got yeah, leads, I'm going to come. So sorry. We try to move to I said, they did five million, bro. I could do seven easy. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to knock, too. We got a question for Trey. Trey. Trey Cap, sales manager, Monarch Roofing, man. I'm going to mute you right now, man. Crushing it. Yo, mute perfect. You got it. Let's see how it works. Yes, sir. What's going on, brother? Trey, what's up, buddy? Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes, sir. Hey, shout out to all the main gangs on, uh, on the break right now. Uh, I just had a question about, um, I know you guys are doing the BCP conference, and uh, we're talking to you over the door, but yeah, we have a little beach, like we don't do um, contingency agreements, and you know, it's kind of got like the perception of it, you can be a little bit pushy. So what I want to ask you guys is, you know, what is the most effective way to accomplish like getting a contingency agreement signed? And what is like the best timing to do that in the process? And then what are some like common objections that you hear from customers in relation to that? Because it's something that it's like, even if I pull off two or three deals, you know, usually we're okay with us, like we build that relationship enough to where it's like, you know, people don't feel like they need to go anywhere else. But it's like if I lost one or two or three deals in the past year. It's worth it and, and it pushes a little bit to, uh, we're trying to build this and trade, it's an awesome question, man. And we're building towards like getting canvassers, not mm -hmm. so much keep our salesmen to do sales activities, yeah. inspection, uh, adjusters and closing deals. So we're trying to get canvassers. So how do you have, like you're saying, con contingency signed? Do you guys do that? Oh Does yeah, matter? great question. You uh, said if you go first, contingency I, yeah, you you're gonna need to <laughs> shut me up. I've got so much. So Trey, here's the thing. I just did a video on this contingency or not, it's split. My view, why commit to them if they won't commit to you? Amen. Okay, number two, it's how the contingency is presented. The contingency needs to be presented in a way that the homeowner says, I want to sign that because it's in my best interest. Yep. Most everybody presents this as, well, you need to sign this thing or I'm not doing this and it's me, 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 sign, sign, sign. And there's three key points. Mr. Homeowner, I just want you to know, before we go through this, by the way, I go through this in my car park closing formula that I teach. So I'm just gonna hit the bullets so Deshaun has time to share his golden nuggets. Number one, never, ever, 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 ever bring up the contingency agreement until the absolute end. You do not, so many guys word vomit their pitch, or I'm here to do a free roof inspection. If we get your roof approved, there's damage, we can get your roof, and then you're gonna get approved, and then you just sign this thing, and then we're gonna go, uh, and then don't, don't, end, don't ever bring it up. You go through the process. The biggest thing, there's nine real, there's nine specific mistakes salespeople make getting up to this point that are trust killers. Everything in our presentation needs to do one of two things. It's either gonna build trust or kill trust. And there's all of those little transitions between the steps of the sale that become forceful without meaning it. So Trey, the biggest thing is after you showcase the damage and 
the homeowner tells you the roof is damaged. By the way, one big mistake is you telling people that the roof's messed up. They expect this. So I teach a framing technique, so they are the ones that tell me that the roof is damaged. Then after this point, once they've told me it's damaged, simple question. Do you like to hear how I can help? Now what are they expecting? They're expecting to be presented to. That key transition is missed from nine out of 10 salespeople. And they just go, well, now how I can help you. And then the homeowner's like education, value, trust. What the hell is this? Paperwork, contract, <laughs> agreement, fine print, pen. And they panic. So true, so true. And then this is what happens. And the homeowner's like, thanks for coming out. We'll call you if we're interested. I've talked with my wife. So that just simple transition, would you like to hear I can help? And then hitting the three bullet points that benefit the homeowner. This is what this does for you. And then I teach a technique where I call it my price lock guarantee to flip the deductible instead of I have to pay it to, that's all you're gonna have to pay. And then I share the true to life factual horror stories. So when I, when I do this, now the homeowner says, I wanna sign, you know, I, I, okay, great. And then if they don't, I'll leave the house because I'm not, I've been screwed so many times by people that have the most sincere handshake. To then closing the door in your face, give me an estimate. I'm like, dude, I met your adjuster two hours early. I got your roof approved. I went through all these, an arm and a leg to get this thing done. So anyway, I gotta shut up now. That's great. Right. Hey, I, I love how you're all about the homeowners. Like, hey, it's Everything. switch role, man. What's in it for you, sir? It's, I'm here for you. I'm distracting you. I'm I knock on your door. I'm taking yeah. time away. Wow, that's powerful, man. I love this. It is. So um, it. just so everybody know, I'm from Florida. And um, we get AOB signed. We used to get AOB signed, which is an assignment of benefits, which is when your homeowner signing over all the rights to the roofing company. And we take over the entire claim and we get all the money, right? So when it comes to paperwork, like, not many people can touch me when it comes to getting paperwork signed. A contingency and AOB, two different things, right? So we just switched to the company I'm with now, we switched to contingency. So kind of like Adam said, I got a very great process of getting people signed up. So we just getting up on the roof. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, we frame everything. So. The company I'm with now, most roofing companies, what I highly encourage you to do is take out clauses. Take out that if you don't use us, you owe us 2500 bucks. If you don't use us, you owe us this. If you do got it in there, I got a great way to display that to a homeowner as well, but I like to take it out, right? So we get up on the roof, we find damage, and just trade, uh, just to answer the question in the short term, yes, I love contingencies. I believe every homeowner should sign a contingency. I work with a company in Oklahoma. They used to close like maybe 12 deals a week, maybe in first priority roofing, um, uh, Adam know we both work with them. Yeah. Um, they just get maybe three or four contingencies signed. I went there, we got 13 deals closed in three days, contingency signed on every single piece of paperwork. That next week they closed 34 deals, all contingency signed, just because I showed them the proper way to do it. So once we get off the roof, we find damage, we coming down, hey, next step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over some basic paperwork. After that, we get in contact with your insurance company, let them know what's going on. You know what I mean? I explain the whole process. So once we get in the house, I tell everybody, that's when you start building rapport, right? So now I'm talking to you about your family, where you from, what you do for work, right? And I'm just filling out paperwork. And then once I got the paperwork signed, I'm getting in front of you. All right, so um, this, this is an um, agreement. I never say contract. I never use the word contingency. I say this is an agreement we have with all our homeowners. I will go over everything before you sign anything. And if you got any questions, feel free to ask. I can break it down for you in depth, but I'm just going to bullet point it for you, okay? And 90% of the homeowners are like, okay. They don't want to read it because I said I'm going to bullet point it for them. Yeah. So I break it all down for them. And I highly encourage if you got a contingency, you should be able to read that contingency without looking at the paperwork. Upside down. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Like, I, I could put it in front of you and I should be able to tell you everything that's on it without me saying, oh, oh, that one, what that one say is. Uh, 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 no, I, you should be able to say it to them without, them without you having to look at it, right? So... If you don't put a clause in your contingencies, this is a great way to do it. And this is just a golden nugget. Like usually people gotta pay for the stuff. So I said, you know what? Most roofing companies out here, they got a clause in their contingency, which means if you don't use them, you have to owe them, a, you got to pay them a certain type of money if you don't get them approved. We a roofing company, we, we like to think that we deal with very honest homeowners, which means if I do get you approved, you're gonna hold up your end of the work like I, I held up my deal. I don't think you're the type of person that'll get money and run off on me like, you don't look like that type of person. And most people are like, no, 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 that's not me. I'm like, oh, no, I just like to make sure. And then we get paperwork signed and we move on, right? And then let's say if you do got a clause in your contingency where they owe you 2,500 bucks, five grand, whatever it may be, I say, so you see that 2,500 bucks? That's nothing for you to worry about, but I'll explain it. In a nutshell, that's for the people that's trying to screw us over. Let's say I get you approved and you take the check and you run off and go on vacation, you owe us 2,500 for all the work we did to get you approved. But I'll be honest with you, Mr. Martin, you don't look like that type of person. I just like to explain it. And I have 90% of my homeowners say, 
no, that's not that type of person. I would never do that. Mm -hmm. And then so that's the way I deal with contingencies. I, I play on people's morals because nobody wants to be known as a bad person. Nobody wants to be known as a thief. Nobody wants to be known as a, a cheater. None of those things. So when I get you to admit that you're not that type of person publicly, now I can hold you accountable to yeah. You address the objection mm -hmm. right away. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's in the homeowner's mind. Yeah, very, I, I'm, I'm very direct. Very well. very That's direct. one well, thing Deshaun and I share in common. I'm sure all of us do in sales is drawing them out, joining that conversation. When they have that doubt, hit it. I'm sure you're thinking, hey, I don't want to sign this thing. You know, one of the concerns that other people have is this, put them at ease, now we're back. So listing those questions out. And I love Deshaun to the framing. I'm going to go through this paperwork. Now it's not a surprise. That transition. So you said, by the way, this is the view of different perspectives. Deshaun's an all-star. You know, we each have, we have mutu many mutual clients because we approach the same topic at a very different angle that's very complimentary. But my point in bringing together diverse perspective is you need to choose the golden nuggets that work for you. We all have a success record that is, you know, can show that this works. But there's different personality types and different styles of different company cultures. So you got to grab those nuggets and use them. But if you actually dissect it, the themes, I talked about those transitions. Deshaun's like, hey, I'm going to go through that paperwork. That's this Virtually the same thing and saying, we'd like to see how yeah. I can help, yep. right? Just he's yeah. direct, I'm asking because I want the yes. Yep. Okay, is one better than, than the other? Then than, uh, no. But uh, at any rate, Different there's that. Different. And then if anyone's interested, I do have a full playlist on using the contingency agreement as a closing tool on my YouTube channel. Yeah, and I, I won't get into contingencies too much because Trey, you know that we don't use contingencies too much, but I think uh, something that we use is see, Monarch Roofing, we spend a lot of time before the claim getting paperwork done. So we do an Xactimate. We have a SunX that does all of our Xactimate work. And then we get, obviously, company can get our picture report. Um, and so we do a lot of work. It's spread out, but we don't, a homeowner doesn't know that, right? So it, SunX takes, you know, 30 minutes to do an Xactimate. So what I always used to say is say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I am gonna spend a lot of time on your claim, getting it prepped before the adjuster comes out. And this is where, Trey, I think where we can sit the contingency. You know, if that's what you guys decide, where you wanna sit the contingency. I just wanna make sure that you guys are committed to making a claim. I don't want to spend all this work and then you decide not to. And if that's what you want to do, that's okay. Totally understand if you don't want to make a claim, no, you know, more of a back off push. But I think that's where we can push the contingency is, hey, if you do want to move forward, awesome. I'm going to spend a lot of work getting the exact amount ready, getting our picture report ready, making sure I get a detailed, um, you know, summary of the damage. Um, and then we'll move forward. So when I have all that paperwork it when the adjuster comes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like more <coughs> committal on our side. We never did contingency. So I'd always have to make sure the homeowner knew I was spending a lot of time on this claim, so please just let me know if you're not committed, right? So what I'd say, I'd say, hey, if for some reason you talk to Mr. Uh, your, your husband when he got home, just please, and you decide not to do the claim for some crazy reason, I'm not sure you, why you want to, but just shoot me a call, that's okay, right? Amen. So then for they know I'm committed, I'm doing the work, because most people want to do the right thing. So if you're spending a lot of time on their claim and you make it personal and not like you're just going to be doing everybody's claim, you're not spending any time, mm -hmm. I think getting that commitment, and that always okay. worked for me rather than contingencies, but Trey, I think we can do that same, you know, that same, uh, basically that same speech, but then that's where it would be a great time to put the contingency. Trey, are you in a car? With He's a fake a, background? Trey, just new office. New <laughs> office. <laughs> <laughs> the steering wheel gives it away. <laughs> I like, I like he's like the best in the background. That's why I told him it's the best background right now. He, he customizes. I like it. And, and, um, Mike Ren, you can speak a class on that. We about to go to Q&A, but just one last thing on that contingency train. You always want to say um, getting this paperwork signed allows us to help you get everything you deserve from your insurance company. If not, they won't talk to us, and then you got to do all that work. We want to take that stress off your shoulders. I was going to ask you guys. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys. Do you guys yep. say that it helps you speak and talk with the insurance company? It's the only way we can't talk to them. Than, and I didn't know if that's uh, you know misleading or it's not. No, that's the truth. Oh, it's not. Yeah, okay. that's the truth. Fact. So. I, I hit three bullets. You're. And can we? Do I need? I can just stop. No, 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 no. This is big. Three things. Number one, this allows me to communicate with your insurance company on your behalf because, as you that's know, huge. that's that's private. I can't call up their insurance company, and they're not going to share any information. Exactly. Number two, this states that this is 100% contingent on us getting the roof approved. Meaning, if we do all this work and nothing happens, you don't owe us a penny. This is dust in the wind. So this is risk reversal. Anyone that geeks out on on sales psychology, I've now removed the risk. And then number three, this provides what I call my price lock guarantee, which means should we get this approved you owe your deductible no more, no less, which is a contractual agreement between you and the insurance company. And the only way we get compensated is by doing the work. Then I go in and I remind them, I say, just so you know, we don't bill 
for our time and I spell out for me meeting the adjuster, for our back office doing any sort of negotiation. By the way, anyone that works in a state where you have the public adjusters that are like crawling up your hinder, um, you know, be careful what you say is all I was getting at. But that's how I've communicated it. Our back office support, sitting on the project, documenting anything that might come up during the process so that financial surprise doesn't land on you. And then I use fear. Remember the top two complaints of contractors. Took too long, cost twice as much. This cost twice too much, people come in low. Oh, something came up. And then I tell them true horror stories of supplements that double the roof cost. I say, so this means that won't land on you. We have it. And again, we're not gonna bill you for all the effort and time that we get put in because the only way we get compensated, not paid, compensated, is for the opportunity or the privilege of becoming the contractor of choice. Uh, and then that's, that, that totally changes the dynamic and puts the power. So Trey, with no contingency, the homeowner holds all the cards, 100%. I wanna switch this around where I hold the cards and I put myself in the position of authority and expertise. Stand in the driver's seat. I know uh, the dude in the middle, okay. What's Heath? I think Heath had a question. Heath. We, and, uh, real, real quick, okay. You guys were referring to no use of contingency for the road beach. Is that by nature of fantastic weather? Or is it just not a whole lot of damage in your bench? You guys are doing most of the retail area? Um, that's because yeah. Martin's a native. She'll like me. <laughs> Smile. I was going to say that it, 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 we talk about implementing, we talk about getting information to implement today. That last five minutes right there, if you guys didn't get anything to implement today, that was killer. I mean, that, that information you guys probably charge a lot for, so I appreciate that. But Heath, to hit on your part too, um, the roofing machine, right? The book that Martin came out, we have such an integral part with uh, inside sales and outside sales. So, you know, it's not just the outside sales going to the home. Once we leave the outside sales, we have amazing inside sales help. Like, you know, Paulette, Lila can go on, Lizzie and, and Wilmington, but they're following up with emails. So a homeowner's getting like, unbelievable amount of information about claim, how to help with the insurance process. We give a full roadmap to the insurance claim. So it's like, they're getting educated. Uh, you know, you talked about education-based selling. I, I'm a big education-based seller. I was graduating with education, so that's what I like to do. So CEOs, the roofing machine is no joke because it keeps people tight and it keeps people understanding. Saying, why would I go anywhere else after Awesome, I just met Trey, who just explained the process to a T. I had built rapport with him, and then like five minutes later, I got my company cam picture report in an email with the next step that he just talked about, and to reach out if, you know, if you have any problems to talk about a whole team, right? We have a whole team that can help them with the claim. Most of our homeowners, thank God, they feel like they're comfortable with us. So yeah. it's a full process for us. So it's, it's not just a homeowner or a salesperson going there and leaving. We have a whole process and that's what we're gonna kind of go over in February at the two day training is the roofing machine process. Heath, that answers uh, your question? So your process, yes, it's not, it's not, it's, thank you for asking Martin. And just to clarify what I think I'm hearing is that your process really is beyond the AOB or contingency. Really, that's just a, a con. In it, yeah, right? well, when I'll do it for your building, you know, support they're getting circumvents the contingency, they don't they don't opt out because they want to do business with Bob. It's, it's so right? much value, no one can compete who, who yeah. want to run away from that. That's what I'm hearing. No one can compete with his process that he created, so it's it's almost where it's like it's it's you know, know. another contractor gets it. The book? You go to dayshopbrand.com, I got it on there for sale. Man. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> right here. He's got your copy right now. He's got your copy right now. By the way, I got to shout out my inside sales when I was selling. Megan, who is still with Monarch, is a... Uh, Matt, oh my gosh, I can't, I Can can't even talk more enough about Megan right now. Megan's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, and it's awesome. Like, how do homeowner buy? You know, homeowner is going to be buying with Bill about trucks. Both of you are talking about trucks and connecting with homeowner, putting yourself in their shoes. But how are you going to prove the homeowner when somebody knock, you knock on the door that you're the company for them, they can trust you? The touch with inside sales, they're like, wow, if you're going to produce my roof, because all they care about, what's the transaction, right? They, 
the, the commitments to get your roof done, to get what you deserve the best. If you do the sales part with so many touch and caring and caring about them so much, it's so much easier. They're going to trust that your production is going to be doing the same thing as your sales team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the master at that, man. I want to be very clear, this though, because I don't want no people. I just because I'm always an eyeball. eyeball. I don't trust homeowners. <laughs> I love I love them, but I don't trust them. So I just want to be very clear that I'm not that guy that go into sales prices and I'm like, I trust. No, I don't. I don't trust homeowners. I sat down with a pastor, prayed with him. He said, "God I sent you here. I got him approved. He took his check and he paid his mortgage." So I'm like, I do not trust homeowners. So I just want people to know that. So I, I, I want to be real. Like, yeah, and it, it said we talk about process, procedures, different yeah. for everybody. Success is different for everybody. Everyone Absolutely. has a different. You know, I'm sure it's different. I'm sure in Myrtle Beach we have houses that are like as close as me and Deshaun right now, right? So that neighbor is so close with this homeowner, like it may be different where yeah. in, in, up north, I know that the houses are a lot more spread out. So I think different territories of America, are different sales strategies, it's, yeah. it's so different. Yeah, One plus seven pro. I think they got a question. Put their hand up. Yep, guys, a couple more questions. Anybody else got any questions? We're, uh, I can listen to all three of you all day for sure, man. There's so much power. We, here. we, could, here for we could go and go. Oh, my I'm God. like, oh man, I'm gonna, you gotta zip it. <laughs> uh, One plus seven pro, there's hands up there. Oh, yeah, Brian Cruz. I think that's my boy with Savage Roofing. Is that how you get commitment in retail? Okay. I think that's it. Uh, I think that's being it. Being professional, I don't see anything passionate, else. and being an expert, Brian. That's how you get commitment, baby. Um, one thing, uh, I've heard a couple of techniques with retail. I get lucky with Discount. my retail deals because I meet them knocking doors, so I'm not really dealing with many competition. But um, when it comes to retail commitment, um, we always like to say, what made you want to do this project? What made you want to get this project taken care of today? So we, we plant that seed of like getting it done today. Um, and then I know a guy that asks loaded questions like, you know, um, after you go through like everything that you're going to do to do the roof, like, do you feel like we're the right guys for you to do the job? Yeah, yeah, we definitely do feel like that, right? You know what I mean? What would be your biggest concern when it comes to the roofing project? You know, let them give you their real concerns and you address that as well. And then once you present the price, because, you know, with my company, we do retail and insurance and we land, we win a lot of retail deals and we're the higher company. Mm -hmm. And people are like, what? I thought retail all about price. No, it's not. Sure. It's all about value and meeting the needs of your homeowner. And one thing I've learned in retail situations, most people just give estimates. And then they follow up and say, you ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? I gotta go down to Florida. Exactly. You talk about you gotta go to Myrtle Beach, I gotta go down to Florida. You know That's the I mean? mindset down there. That's all they do is <laughs> give estimates and leave. Yeah. But what you gotta understand is once you give somebody an estimate in retail, you know, now they're looking for who go. I mean, we don't close deals in retail because we're the only company that went through the process. This is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen next. This is what we're gonna do. Agenda. This is what we're gonna do. And they're like, wow, the other three companies just gave me estimates. Mm -hmm. So I think actually make sure you got a process, make sure you got value and you're not just giving an estimate and you're following up with an email. I don't I don't email estimates. I only come to your house and give you estimates. You know, so right? I, I make them meet me. Mm -hmm. But biggest thing is when it comes to getting that commitment retail is um if we was to do business today, like I go, um, it's like um, if we was to get your project started today, what would be your biggest concern? You know, moving forward, and let them give you their biggest concern, and you address it right there. And you say, is that the only thing from stopping us from doing business today? Outside of price, is that the only thing? Isolating yeah. the objection. Boom, let's get it. Isolating the objection. John DeRosa kills it. He tries to get four commitments: the need, the urgency, uh, you know, the company, yeah. the products. And then once you have those commitments. Four commit those three commitments, you know the price is the only isolated objection, and then exactly. you can work on that. So I'm sure you could awesome guys. We've got to wrap it up a yeah, little bit. I know we keep going. <laughs> yep. Um the conference about to start too. A little bit about uh, <coughs> just real quick about uh, you pro uh Pitch Pro Movement. Yeah, Pitch yeah. Pro Movement that you guys yeah. were launching. What is this? Um so I'm because I'm, I'm gonna say the brief version because Adam will give you. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, give, so, give Adam at least a good five minutes. You know, <laughs> we got six minutes, so you guys are good. I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you an analogy, right? Let's say all y'all all stars, right? Y'all y'all killed it this year. You sold one million, two million, right? And where do all the top athletes go? They go to the Pro Bowl, right? And then they get to deal with like elite coaches, and they get to get continuous coaches to help the game to that go to that next level. So the pitch pro movement like the Pro Bowl, but it's year round, right? Adam, the head coach, and if I say I put it in perspective, I'm like the officer coordinator, right? So if you a high level player and you want to continue to grow, you need to get around high level coaches, and that's the pitch pro movement. You got me teaching sales and principles. You got Adam teaching strategies and formulas. You got John Cenac teaching about how to identify shingles. You got Matthew Mahalahan teaching about how to deal with insurance companies and insurance of justice and then you got Jim Aline teaching on marketing so it's very rare you can go and get that high level of coaching at the price that we're giving it but pitch pro movement man if you're a high level athlete and want to continue to get high level coaching 
Yeah, you nailed it, man. And, and I just want to share why it started. Uh, I've, I've prided myself on providing the most cost-effective solutions in the industry. And a lot of folks for, for the sales side. So I provide an all-in-one sales training, sales strategy, and sales system. And people have been using it. And then as we grow, we create new problems. This is sales and business is an infinite game. If anyone thinks you've reached the top, it cracks me up, especially the ego sales guys, you know, the ones that you go to train, they're like this, teach me something. They're like, I don't need to do role play, I don't need to do this. I'm like, okay, so that's like being in the NFL, be like, I'm too good to practice, I'll show up on game day. Like, no dude, you're delusional. You know, Deshaun and I are chewing through books at all times, constantly learning. I was listening to sales podcasts, a book, a book audio book on my drive-in. We had a conference. Yeah, and we're at a conference, and, and we, anyway, my point is, as we continually grow, we, we encounter new situations. So the Pitch Pro movement was done by request. It took me two years to finally figure out the most cost-effective way to put this together. And I very 30, 45 days in, I realized it's more about, than about me. So that's why Deshaun and I connected, and, and John Cenac and Matt and Jim, is to find these, these what I call like the key silos in your day-to-day -day business operations. Of course, we have things beyond that, operations, legal, stuff like that. But my biggest mission is investing, our biggest mission, and by the way, I don't consider myself the head coach, I'm just the guy that started the thing. But it's, it's not about each of us, it's about having access to who you need when you need it, like tuning in on Netflix. I need mindset stuff today, boom, join Deshaun, live Zoom call. We've got 10 sessions a month plus a leadership mastermind with private discussion boards. So it's a really good place for people to tune in and ask questions, but also to learn not only what's, what's worked for us, but what's worked for others. And the two stories I just want to end on, and then I'll really wrap it up, is the caliber of people that are there. I have two company, we have two companies from Orlando. We were out to dinner a, a few months ago. One of them hadn't taken a vacation in two years. These are competitors, by the way. And he says, dude, go on vacation, I'll watch your jobs. That's the kind of people who are inside. And common questions that come up that I thought were simple answers. Like, how do you pay your crews? I'm like, the way I always did. I didn't know there was more than one way. <laughs> and then like 10 companies come up, they're like, oh, we do it this way, this way. I'm like, really? It's a simple thing. But, but So my point is diversity is really powerful to be able to learn from different viewpoints. I openly disagree with some things that everybody says, as Deshaun will with he, me. He say, don't knock no solicited doors. If everybody knows yeah. me, I'm all about knocking no solicited <laughs> doors. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And like this isn't, I used to be like, it's not this way. And now I'm like, no, listen to both. It's So anyway, that's the big idea is to just join for that ongoing um, mentorship to continually level up and be surrounded by some really great people. And just, this don't got nothing to do with the Pitch Pro movement, but why y'all think Mark performing at the level that he performed at, because he get constant mentorship from Martin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? High level players stay around mentorships, they stay around coaches. And if your coaches don't got coaches, you shouldn't be being coached by that coach. And we got coaches, so yep. you know, it's just something to be mindful. And I think a lot of the stuff that we go over is, you know, is, is people already know that, but it's reminders. When I was a salesperson, I wish I had a sales manager coming to me, and I, I had Martin, of course, but he's off selling too, like crazy, but yeah. I wish I had somebody to keep reminding me of all the things that we're going over today. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, is because I want to remind everybody at Monarch Roofing and anybody that's on Riva Impact, all the small things, because we forget things like that. Yeah. If we conference, all the information is going to go in, yep. but then that means it's got to make room so some of the stuff that I already knew had to go out. So yeah. constant reminders and that's why I watch your YouTube, man. That's why I watch your YouTube. It's like, I know the stuff, right? But it's a constant reminder and you guys say it in a different way to impact me a little bit more. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on, man. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're one less, yeah, awesome. So, so so much power here and, and we got to get going here. But I got a question. Somebody asked, how do you get to the class uh, next month for February 24th and 25th in Myrtle Beach, the Riva Impact Sales? Um, it's two thousand dollars for person, but Deshaun, if you agree with us here, we're gonna do a special coupon code for five hundred dollars off. Uh, it's gonna be what's the coupon yeah, code? Bowtie twenty two. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Bow so bowtie twenty two is the coupon code for five hundred dollars off when you check out. You see that? And we're gonna put in the um, link into uh, everybody so we can you can sign up. So thank you very much. Hope you learned something. Again, yeah, yeah. stop competing against each other. Let's start making this industry better and start dominating your market. Yeah. Thanks. Great seeing you, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it.